Hey everyone, welcome back to another Fusion tutorial. Yesterday I uploaded a video about creating knurling on your 3D prints, um, and we did a knurling pattern on a cylinder, which of course is round, has no corners or anything like that. Well, one of my subscribers asked if I could show how to do knurling on like a hexagon or pentagon or something like that. So that's what we're going to do today. So let's just jump right into it. Um, we are going to create a sketch. So come up here to create sketch and click on the bottom plane. We're going to go up to create polygon and choose whatever you want. However you want to measure your polygon. We're just going to drag this up. Not super important for what we're doing here. Let's do maybe like, eh, that's kind of big. Let's do 15. Okay. So we've got 30 millimeters from here to here. Now I am going to do something that may make sense. Well, I'll explain it. So after this sketch, we're going to extrude this into a 3d solid body. However, I'm going to create kind of like a pizza slice, a slice of this hexagon because fusion doesn't like patterning con complex features. It's really easy to crash fusion that way. And so what I would rather do is just create the pattern that, that knurling pattern on one edge. And then instead of patterning that knurling all the way around the hexagon, I would rather just pattern the whole body. So I hope that makes sense. So instead of extruding this whole hexagon, I'm just going to extrude a piece of it. So I'm going to click on this profile right here. I'm going to hit E on the keyboard for extrude. And maybe let's go up like 75, which would be like three inches. Yeah, let's just make it. Yeah, let's just do, let's do 100. Okay. And you can see, I can't see any of my edges because if I go down to display setting, my visual style is set to shaded. I want to do shaded with visible edges only. And now we can see um, our bottle better. Okay. And since Fusion, again, this is somewhat of a complicated process for Fusion to do, or at least, you know, if you have an older computer, it may explode and burn your house down. But I'm going to make it simpler on Fusion. So if you have your visual style, I'm sorry, your camera set to perspective and ortho faces, perspective just means it's going to be, it's going to look like 3D. Um, and if you go to orthographic, it kind of makes it 3D, but 2D. I guess I don't know the, <laughs> the exact definition of how to explain that, but this is much easier on um, Fusion's UI or, or or whatever you want to call it. It's It's just easier for fusion to handle this way. So I'm going to, I'm going to continue in this uh, camera mode. So let's make sure we we're not forgetting where our middle is. Okay. So here is our outside edge right here, our outside face, I should say. So let's create that knurling pattern on this face. So I'm going to create another sketch. And this time I'm actually going to create it on this face. So instead of let's hide that first sketch. So instead of creating the sketch on one of these origin planes, I'm going to create it on that face. And now you don't have to do this, but I'm going to try to keep things super symmetrical here. So I'm going to draw a line. So I hit L on the keyboard for line, and then I'm going to come over here and make it a construction line. So you can click here. Or if you want the shortcut on the keyboard, it's just the X key. So if you see I'm hitting X right here, it's toggling on and off. So I'm going to move my mouse until it snaps to the center, click and drag down to the other center and make sure you turn construction line off. And now I'm just going to draw a line. Um, basically I'm just going to click draw a line and you can see if there's two options here. If I hit tab, I'm tabbing between the length of the line and the angle of the line. So I want this angle to be 45 degrees and the length doesn't really matter. Let's just do maybe 50 and we'll hit enter. Now I did switch it that way. It doesn't really matter. Um, it's still at 45 degrees. I really don't know why it switched 
when my line was going this way. Doesn't matter. Now let's get this line centered with this line. So we're going to go up to the midpoint tool. We're going to click the line we just drew and then click this line. And what that just did was it took the midline of this line and put it on the midline of that line. So that's all we need to do. So let's finish sketch. So now we want to create a profile that we can cut away from this face. So we drew this line so we can create a construction plane along it. So we're going to go up to construct and then plane along a path. And we already had that blue line selected. That's why it already showed up there. But if you didn't, you just have to click on this line and it would show up. So there's our plane that goes through that path. So I'm going to hit OK. And now we are going to draw a sketch. So create a sketch and we're going to draw it on that plane that we just made. So here's the origin. Here's the line, basically looking at that line straight on. So I'm going to turn the body off and we're going to create the little cutaway that we're going to do on this surface. So let's draw a line. And this is where you're going to have to play with the dimensions of everything on how you want this knurling to look. But let's just keep it simple. I'm going to hit two millimeters straight up and down, hit escape on the tool. And again, let's center this line on the origin. So we're going to click the midpoint tool, click this line, and then click the origin. And now that ties that midpoint to that line. And then let's draw the triangle portion or the other uh, parts. So actually what we can do is let's do L again for line, hit X on the keyboard for construction, and maybe let's make this one. Hit escape, hit X on the keyboard to take it off construction, and then let's draw two more lines to make that triangle. And there we go. So let's finish sketch and let's bring back the body. So you see how we drew that triangle right on that other line? So if we bring back this body, now what we have to do is cut that triangle away from this face. And so let's select this profile. We're going to go to sweep. If you don't see it here, it'll be under create sweep. And since we already clicked on the profile and had that selected, our profile selected, and then we have to select the path. And now since it's going through that body, since we made this visible, it should automatically be set to cut. Um, and so make sure it is cutting that out. And there you go. So let's hit OK. All right, so we have the first cutout here. So now we are going to pattern this cutout up and down this face. So let's just go to the front view. Let's go up to the rectangular pattern tool. And usually, if you're not, if you haven't been into the pattern tool before, this will be set to bodies. So you're going to want to switch this to features. So that's the object type. And so now we have to select the object, which is the feature that we just did, which is that sweep feature. So we can go down to our timeline here and just click on the sweep feature. You can see it highlights it in blue here, but then also right here, it shows we have one selected, which is what we want. And now the axes we're gonna choose is um, the Z axis, but we can just actually choose any line that goes straight up and down. So we're just gonna choose that line. So now you can see we're, it wants us to pattern this in two directions, but we're only going to do one. So quantity three, let's see where we're at. We're going to do symmetric, and that just means it's going to go in both directions. And let's just drag this out until it passes that face. And we're like right on the corner. That's probably okay. Again, this is where you're going to have to play around with these numbers to know how many pattern instances you want. So for quantity, I'm going to maybe put like 30. And let's just hit OK. And there you can see it patterned out that cutaway into that face. 
Now, this is the cool part or the, the easy part. You may be inclined or think that you should do that whole thing over again, right? Draw the line in the opposite direction, cut it away. But we can actually just use the mirror tool for this, and then it'll mirror this pattern going in the opposite direction. So let's go up to Create, all the way down to Mirror. And again, this may be set to Bodies, so change it to Features. And the features we are going to mirror is the Sweep and the, and the Rectangular Pattern. And you can see it has two selected. The Mirror Plane, we're going to mirror it on this plane. And then hit OK. And there you go, we've created that pattern. So now it's just as simple as doing another pattern of this body. So let's go up to Rectangular Pattern. Again, if this is not up here, you hit Create, go to Pattern, and then you can choose what type of pattern you want. However, when you click here, you can choose Rectangular, Circular, or On a Path from here. So we're going to do Circular. We're not going to do Features this time. We're going to do Bodies. Click that body. The Axis, we can just click this line here. And we made a hexagon, so we're going to change this to a 6. And we can hit OK. And there is our knurling on a hexagon. Now, this is where, like I said, you're going to have to maybe play with, you know, this looks a little odd here. So let's see. I, I'm on kind of an old computer, so let's see if I can do this without blowing it up. So we can go all the way back to that. Um, is this the triangle we did? That's the line. So let's go to this sketch right here is where we drew that triangle. And we can change things. So let's maybe make this... 1.5 so you can see it made that a little skinnier in this direction finish sketch and it'll now update everything we just did and it'll kind of change how the corners look and i'm going to go back to perspective so we can see this in more 3d way but anyways so this is where you get to change things and so instead of maybe changing the size of the triangles here you may want to go back to that first pattern and maybe do like 25 maybe a little less and hit okay and that changes you just got to keep playing around with it until you get that corner how you want it once it is how you want it you're going to want to join these bodies so you can see we have all these bodies uh separated here so you just go up to the combine tool the target body is this body and then the tool bodies are what you're going to join to it. So then you just click on all the rest. And like I said, go a little slow here because this is tough on Fusion. And then just hit OK. Make sure join is select. And now we just have one body. And you can still go back even after joining. You can still go back and um, change things. So if we go back to that pattern, maybe let's bump this up to 35. Let's hit OK. And there we go. Anyways, that is how you do the knurling on a hexagon or pentagon or something. Now, one thing I would suggest, um, actually, you should try it yourself, <laughs> but, but don't try it on a big project that you're working on without saving. Whenever you're doing complicated patterns and stuff like that with Fusion, you really need to save your work beforehand because there's a high chance that you could crash, crash Fusion. But... If we go all the way back to the beginning when we did this first sketch, if I would have extruded, I'm just going to kind of do it. I won't, I won't go through the whole thing. If I would have extruded this whole thing, hit OK, and then did my pattern on this, and then instead of patterning the body, the little wedge of the body, I tried patterning just the knurling effect around this almost for certain fusion would have froze on me um fusion can pattern solid bodies pretty easily but it doesn't like patterning complicated patterns <laughs> if that makes sense you're patterning a pattern um, or a feature 
And so you have to make sure you're doing your steps right. And again, make sure you are, let me erase this, let me delete this. Make sure you are saving your work before doing this because you definitely could crash your computer. And I did already before this, before creating this video. I did it that first way or the way I just told you not to do it. And I had to do a force quit on Fusion. So there you go. I hope that was helpful. And if you have any other uh, requests from me, let me know. I'm always willing to do a subscriber request if it's good content that can teach people something. 